All right. Okay, we're officially recording now. It feels so much different. Welcome, web users group, everybody. Happy um, winter, okay. wishing it was spring, February. I'm over the rain. I don't know about you guys. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I can hear. Okay. Got it, Jason? Can yep. you hear us? Okay. Yes. Yes. All right. I'm back. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna mute you though, so that we, so we try to keep all the participants muted. Oh, you got it, okay. That way we're, uh, keep the noise level down. If you have any questions or comments, put it in the chat window and I'll, I'll uh, manage that, so. Um, okay, well, this agenda, um, we have some things, kind of some updates and some information to give you, and then we definitely wanna have some time at the end um, to do some Q&A, so you guys can ask, any burning questions? They don't even have to be burning. They can just be questions um, of things that you are wondering, best practices, how to do things technically, web world things. Um, and it doesn't have to be WCMS, of course. It can be you know anything web. So I'm gonna kick it off to Rob, who's gonna start with some updates. Yep. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's see. I'm gonna share my screen and try to go quickly today so that we can get to the Q&A part. But I wanted to share with everyone because uh, there's a lot of crossover here on this group with uh, events calendar users. So I wanted to share something. I'm going to resize my screen. I wanted to share something that we just recently added to the events calendar, uh, I think last week or, or maybe two weeks ago. And that is um, for any time, so I'm here on the events calendar and I'm adding an event and most of you or many of you are probably familiar with this interface here. You got to put in all your information about your event. And when it comes down here to the event photo, the standard is that you would have a photo of your own to put in here. You can upload it through this thing or just drag it onto this box. Um, and before a few weeks ago, there was one um, there was one choice for what happened if um, you didn't have an image. It was like a standard icon of a calendar would just show up and it was gold. And it was kind of, you know, I don't know. It was, it was a quick thing that um, we put in there or that I put in there actually right before we launched so that events without photos would at least have something showing up in that space. So, um, Trung on my team had been working on uh, on another project to develop some uh, icons for something else, um, and that project kind of didn't it didn't go through. We decided to uh, to skip that project, but we still had all these icons. So um, we talked about putting them in the events calendar as choices for default things. So now, if you don't have an image for your event, or maybe it's coming. Sometimes people put their events in really early. They don't have any artwork for it yet. So we put in this, um, these, uh, this little library of um, icons that uh, Trung did, and you can choose from any one of them to put, an event, um, put a photo or put a graphic on your, on your event. <clears throat> By default, I believe, if you don't choose anything, the slug with trees will show up. But um, this means that you always have access to something a little bit different than just the standard calendar icon. So totally encourage you, if you don't have any artwork for an event and you're putting in an event to um, use one of these. We tried to do things that are iconic about campus. So we thought about genomics and the Seymour Center and the farm and then just the general uh, um, I don't know, the, the general environment around campus of trees. And then there's the requisite banana slug one. We'll probably add more. We're just kind of talking about what ideas um, for other images that would represent campus could be, and we'll put them in there. But I just wanted to call that out because it means that you don't have to just have the standard gold calendar icon anymore um, if you don't have any other artwork for your event. Any questions about that? Um, there's a couple things. Um, oh, Katie is saying um, something maybe that shows some ac more action. She's from Oprah's, so probably mm. um, someone on a bike. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Skateboard. Someone, I don't know. someone running from a mountain lion. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. okay. Yeah. 
Um, so that's great. We'll t I'll take that um, feedback. Okay. Actually, Trung Trung's on the call, so he can note that feedback. And we'll it'll it'll be slow to add more, but we'll add more um, as we come up with ideas and have the resources to to produce them. So, um, just wanted to mention that. And okay, cool. I'm gonna switch screens again to a different window. I want to change, hang on a second. This one, yes, share. Okay. So changing subjects here, um, I want to talk about the um, redesign project. And uh, <laughs> Teresa properly pointed out when I mentioned it as an agenda item. <laughs> Do you have anything substantive? Because just saying it's still going is not enough of an idea. <laughs> <No. laughs> Thank you, Teresa, for my blindness of that all. <laughs> voicing the um, the unspoken opinion. It actually is helpful, right? Because we don't want to just show up every time and be like, hey, it's still happening. We'll let you know when there's something else. Um, it is still happening and there is more going on. We're actually in the design phase now. So I'm anticipating that by the next time, next web users group meeting, we'll be showing like um, either uh, final or close to final uh, versions of the designs. But for the, for the moment, we're, um, we're just getting started on that. But we do have... Um, I have the results of some usability testing that, that was done on wireframes. So this was a test of how the site is structured. And this is, um, sorry, referring just to the homepage, the home environment. And the, the testing was done on finding some specific things in the home environment section. It's really a test of how the site is structured and whether the navigation labels and the organization of the site makes sense to um, people within our target audiences. And if you remember, that's prospective students and parents, uh, faculty, community members, uh, forgetting the others, but there are others as well. And so you run this usability test to see if people who are not us uh, understand the website. website. Ooh, that was loud as we have it structured. Um, so I'm gonna share these results with everyone after the, um, after the meeting today and I'll let you just look over the PDF. It's a pretty thorough um, set of results from this usability testing website that they use called Loop 11. And um, I'll just explain really quick. We had, I believe it was like 10 or 12 tasks so we sent a link out to 2,000 UCSC undergrads, current students, and about 35 or so went and took this test. And I know it sounds like not very much, but it's surprising what you can get uh, within 10 to 15 um, participants. You start to see patterns almost immediately, what's working and what's not. So we sent them a test link with 15 tasks and they're basic tasks like find, um, the, find the link to one of our residential colleges, find the cost to attend UCSC, campus tours, you can see them all listed here. Uh, they're just sort of things that we understand um, first time audiences are typically coming to the campus homepage to find out more about. Um, and so this is the success rate of these folks, how they, how they did, were they able to get what they were asked to find. Um, you can see in the case of this find campus destinations, um, one, there was, we have some work to do. What, what does that mean? What's a campus destination? Like um, find so, a, a location on campus or? Yeah, sorry, this question was about, uh, it was intended for uh, community members, and it was really about, uh, I forget how the question was worded, but it was something like, um, look for things I can do, you can do on campus for the general public, like classes and, and events for the general public. And it really came down to the way we labeled where to find this stuff. So campus destinations, like, you know, you can come to the farm for a class, or you can, um, public is welcome at the wellness center. Uh, well, with a with a membership, that kind of thing. It's like, how do we bring 
uh, people who are not students or, or staff or faculty to campus via these things that are open to the public. And I forget, I'm trying to think of, I think it was that we put this underneath uh, visit or we didn't put it underneath visit, mm -hmm. but it had to do with where this information was located. And it was really clear that people thought that where it was located was for students. And so they weren't clicking on it and they weren't finding it. And so what we can see here is like 24% of people abandoned the task altogether. 43% did not find what we asked them to find. And then a third did. So this is one of those things where just looking at the color bars here, you can tell immediately that there's something to work out, something to fix. And the average time, that's in seconds. So I'm looking at like fine Cal College, is that 61.2 seconds? Yes. So it took them six over a minute to find Cal College. Is that what, what you can deduce from that? Or is that how we're reading that or no? Yes, that is, is that seconds? I'm pretty sure that's seconds. Okay. Um, the other thing is this is the order that these questions were in. And okay. so what you can see is like a growing familiarity with the layout of the site. So by the time you get down here to the last question, they're, you know, 17 seconds. So this is one thing this indicates is that they're, they're kind of like figuring it out and maybe a little bit more um, uh, with the magnifying glass, just kind of looking things over and taking it all in. And then by the time you get down to here, they're kind of keyed into how the site works. And so you would expect that um, as the number of tasks grows, that the, this number might even go down. Or if these people were asked to do the same thing again a week later, it would probably be a half or a third of the time. So this is more reflective of how long it takes to find something on a site you've, you're unfamiliar with. Mm -hmm. But then as familiarity grows, except for here, where yeah. again, it's just such an outlier that, that and again, only from 35 people. So it's such an outlier, you can tell. Yeah. And I wanted to show this mostly um, because we're, we plan to keep doing this usability testing um, even after the site launches. And so I wanted to make this group familiar because at some point we'll, we won't just be testing the, um, the main page. We had to limit the scope on this to the main campus website, but um, in the future, we want to be able to test the entire pathway someone might take from coming to the homepage all the way through down to, say, Cal College's um, website and something that might only be on that website that we need people to find. So I, I wanted to make this group familiar with, with usability testing now because we'll continue to do it and we'll continue to do it all the way down the, um, the, the path to uh, certain types of information. So this report's a bit dense, I'll share it anyway, but it's, it's interesting, I think, to take a look at. And um, we also have some videos of, of folks who opted to have their, um, their web browsing recorded while they were taking these tests. I'll see if I can make those available as well. Um, so we have a, we have a, a comment and a couple questions. Um, so Detmar says, we get, you know, another, another group with other tasks, with mixed tasks. So, you know, maybe I think he's speaking to, you sent it to undergrads to do those things. And so if you do another one, try, you know, different groups with other tasks. Um, <clears throat> and then Pamela says, what is the formula for average page views and average time for determining the ease of using the site? Hmm. And then, yeah, so then that's. Um, average page views in this case is going to, um... It's a little bit of a mixed metric because some of these things could be two levels deep. Some of them could be four levels deep. So there could be a required number of pages you have to go to just to complete the task. Um, what I think this is intended to reflect is how much like bouncing around the person did. But in this case, it can also show that it's also possible that it took three clicks. There had to be three page views to get it to find this information. So I'm, I'm not taking this metric too seriously. Um, average page time is, or average time is average time it took to complete the task start to finish. So and then um, Kate's sorry. asking, does the test capture whether they use the site search? Uh, in this case, 
the site search did not work and it was intentionally um, hidden because the idea is to test the, the architecture and the navigation and the labeling on the navigation. So we omitted site search from these test pages so that it wasn't, wasn't an option. Okay. All right. Um, where are we on time? Ooh, only 20 minutes. Cool. Mm -hmm. What is the next one? Oh, okay. Exit. Accessibility. Accessibility. Um, back to this browser window. Hold, please. Okay. Let's look at the firehouse. Mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about like where Site Improve comes from, Teresa? And yeah. So, um, I mean, I'm not the expert on this, but but uh, UCOP, Office of the President, um, purchased a um, three-year license for all the UCs to for this tool called Site Improve, um, and the main well, I don't know the main reason, honestly, but one of the big things that it does is it helps sites improve their accessibility scores. It does a lot of other things to improve scores, which we haven't really dug into yet um, here on this campus, but we're focusing on the accessibility uh, scoring um, and reporting that it does. And so we have this, this license. We, we're just starting to um, get in there and start to um, review our sites and see how our sites are scoring um, and then eventually um, in you know coming soon to a theater near you um, this would be something that you as site managers um, and site owners would be able to get access to and to start working on your own accessibility things but before we roll that out to everybody so that we can you know improve our scores um, as best as we can. There are some things that we have to do first. Um, but I will say one thing that um, is cool about Site Improve that we're trying to figure out how to do, um, not how to do it, but when to do it and how we would roll it out was, is that there's actually a plugin for the WCMS that we can just tr flip a switch and turn it on and it connects your site directly to the accessibility right inside the WCMS. So you can just click it and go to your, you know, your pages and see how they individually score. It's a little bit more complicated um, than we originally thought, so we haven't really rolled that out yet. But Rob's going to kind of talk about, you know, what we're doing right now. Yep. Yeah. Th thanks, Teresa. You did a way better job than I would have done. <laughs> um, yeah. And it's, so, um, if we were to just sort of roll this out right now, a lot of a lot of reports for sites, particularly for WCMS sites, would show things that uh, only we can fix uh, at the at the global level. Either it's a style sheet thing, or it's the way the templates are set up in WCMS. So we've talked about you know it being a little bit confusing to say, hey, here's this tool for checking the accessibility of your site, but there's a bunch of things that might get flagged that you can't fix. So we're, um, my team in particular is going through trying to find the things that are, are under our responsibility that we can fix ahead of time so that by the time we roll out this tool for everyone to use, it, the issues that are showing up are issues that you can actually fix, you know, because it's, and, and we'll, I'll show you, you know, what we're seeing now. Um, I'm just going to go. So I'm, I'm looking at my scope here is the is the main campus website. So it's www and pages on www. And in the site improve menu, as Teresa said, there's a um, there's a, a lot of other things that site improve does, but we're focusing on the accessibility for for this um, for today. So there's this overview here and you get this score. Yes, it went up since yesterday. Cool. <laughs> uh, I was working on things yesterday. Uh, you get this overall score. And uh, to be honest, I don't exactly know what 65.5 over 100 means. I just know that I want this to go up because 
there's a benchmark for the education industry at 70.5 and I want to beat that. So <clears throat> this is um, this is where we're at today. My team has been meeting once a month or so for about 90 minutes to take on any of the global um, issues that we can find, meaning anything that has to do with a style sheet or a template or something that an individual site owner can't fix. And we've done that three or four times now. And every time we go in, we think, oh yeah, we're gonna knock three or four of these things out today. Um, but it turns out accessibility can be difficult. And, and when you make a small change, it has a cascading effect down downstream and so we're we have to be much more careful about the changes that we make um, so that we don't cause other issues or we don't make things uh, break on sites that have something a little bit special about them so we've been able to take on like one or two um, accessibility issues with each uh, meeting and I think I'm just gonna look here if there's a I think there's a graph no where's the graph under summary summary i think it's under maybe it's under summary no sorry let me find it here there's pages with multiple level pages at level three let's just go here what i'm looking for is the graph Another reason we haven't rolled it out, we don't fully really understand it yet. Do you know where the graph is, Teresa? I don't. I, um, I... It's this one. Okay, I found it. <laughs> Sorry. You just scroll down. I got it. Yeah. Um, so there's this graph here of, of what issues exist. And it'll show you, you know, what's going on. It's interesting to see this because we, we clearly made a change here and it helped for a little bit and then it didn't help. We definitely made some kind of change here that definitely didn't help sometime in October. And sometimes it can be a small change that we need to make for another reason and it, it causes an accessibility issue. I think another thing is sometimes more pages become visible to the site improve tool and so the number of issues goes up. I mean that's basically what this is reflecting is Here's the total number of pages where there are problems. So it's it's also possible that we just added. Up. When was it that we made the the link change? Right when it was we... right about here in December. Okay, oh that was it. Yeah. <laughs> made so, it worse. So, <laughs> <I'm> kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Didn't make it worse. It, well, it. I mean that's the that's Christmas, right? So I don't know yeah. if it's just page views or whatever, but yeah. Yeah. Um. So. I was going to look for the score one too, because you can see here how we've had, we've been hovering right around 65 or 64 and a half. And now we're up over 65 and 65.5. So we're trying to get to 70 and I'm actually would love to get to about 75 by the end of the year. That's the goal. And again, everything we're working on here that affects the main campus website also affects all of your sites. So we haven't done anything that isn't gonna uh, trickle down, cascade down to all the, cascade, <laughs> down to all the other <laughs> sites in the WCMS. It's Friday. Yeah. Um, so anything that we do uh, improves your site scores as well. And we don't have all the sites in here yet, but rest assured that whatever we're doing here is also improving the accessibility of of your websites as well. And um, when when we feel like we've got most of these things hammered out for from the template perspective, that's when we'll start um, making this tool available. And, and what you'll see is you'll see more content related accessibility issues like images without alt tags or um, text links that are blank or things like that. So um, there'll be more, more to come. Yeah, and I think I think kind of the, the part, one of the things we're kind of toying with is, you know, when we go to roll it out, we're not going to just roll it out to the campus at large, like all at once. And I think what I would like to do is probably reach out to you guys as first kind of pilot users, like, hey, can I get, you know, 20 of you 
um, to say, hey, I'm, I'm willing to go in, kind of learn a little bit about the tool and start, you know, poking around because then you guys could give us feedback about like, you know, if we have to provide some sort of, you know, a little training or something like that, that you could help us with that. So um, I think we might do it kind of in an incremental, um, you know, group of people by group of people. Um, yeah. So we're not, you know. Let me show an example here too of, um, let's go with pages at level two with multiple errors. So what it does is it shows you a list of pages with issues. So I'm just gonna click on the first one here. Now it's gonna pull up an individual report for a specific page and show me what the problem on this page is. What's a good one? One we've been dealing with quite a bit is color contrast. So I'm just gonna click on this and it's gonna show me um, some color contrast issues. And this is, actually this is a AAA issue and we've talked about not. Um, there's a big jump in, sorry, I'm gonna go on, we'll go on an accessibility talk here for a minute. Mm -hmm. Um, for uh, accessibility standards, there are these. There are three. There are three levels. There's single A, double A, and triple A, and each one has different specifications for certain things. Like, uh, for instance, in this case, color contrast. How much different is the color of the text from its background color? And at level two, it's required to be uh, four to one. So this text should be four times darker than the background. At level three, it should be seven to one. Seven to one is kind of hard to get without just making black on white or white on black. Um, it, it's difficult. And I've, we've talked about, I don't know if Kevin is on this on the call today, but um, Kevin uh, Andrews from the DRC, we've talked with him about it. Is it is it okay if we meet double A but not triple A? And, and in this case, we've decided that double A is what we'll shoot for and then triple A where possible. So here where we have body text that is just a straight black text on a white background, we can get triple A standard there, but it'll be harder to do in other places like the interface up here and, and things like that. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna go back to a different issue because let's go with this one. Element is not highlighted on focus. And it's actually gonna be a hidden issue. So it's not really, <laughs> go back to another one. Non-text content. <laughs> They're all complicated. So in this case, it's, um, we have a link and all that link has in it is an image. And so that's a, um, it's something that we have to decide, is that okay? Is it not okay? Um, sometimes alternative text um, satisfies the requirement. Doesn't, oh, because it's empty. <laughs> learn something new, I learn something new every time. So in this case, yeah, we have an image here. It doesn't have alternative text. And so um, this looks like basically an empty link to a screen reader. And so this is something we'll need to fix. Um, yeah, we need to fix that. Someone on my team note that, we'll go after this one the next time we get together. But this is just an example. Uh, and this is, you know, one page. Um, this is probably not something, I mean, we'll we'll take this on because it looks like an easy fix, but again, this isn't something that's global in scope. This is limited to our, our site, so we probably wouldn't prioritize it above something else. Um, I'm gonna roll down through other things we've fixed or changed. Um, Detmar, Detmar made a comment that the University of California IT accessibility policy requires compliance with the WCAG 2.0 level double A standards for all web-based information. And then you yes. put a link in there if you guys wanted to go um, take a peek at that. Yeah. In the chat. So we're, we're, um, we're required to meet double A. And then, like I said, we're having discussions around triple A where, where, where it might be possible. Because obviously be, it would be great to be triple A compliant, but there are going to be limitations to what we can do. So, um, yep, that's the goal. 
Any questions about this? I know this is kind of a lot to throw at you at one time. Yeah, and then, uh, um, you know, Sue already put a uh, request in to get access to the library. If you guys are, if, if there are any of you who are like, oh, I really want to get in there, you know, there's nothing stopping you. Um, we can, you know, just put a ticket in. We can get you access. Um, we're just, it's like, like Rob says, we're just, there's some things that you'll see that you're like, oh, I, I actually can't fix that. But it might be, there might be something in there that you're like, oh, I can make my site better. So, so yeah, just if, if you are dying to get in um, and get an account, just put a ticket in and we'll get that for you. Um, and then the site improve also has some pretty good training videos too. If you, you wanted to kind of go through those and get some more information about that, but accessibility is not going away. If anything, it's just going to get more and more in the forefront of um, for you guys as site managers. And so, um, you know, just know that it's coming and more is coming. And so um, we're trying to get this tool squared away so that we can really roll it out for you guys to, to do all of that. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I, can I pontificate on that for a minute? Pontificate away. <laughs> um, what I told my team when we first started doing this is um, uh, in some circles, and I haven't experienced this at UCSC, but before I got to UCSC, I experienced it quite a bit, that accessibility is like this bolt-on thing that you do second. You know, they, oh, okay, we need to make sure it works for screen readers. Um, the, the truth is, though, that all of us at some point in our lives and our careers will Re will rely on accessible technology and websites being accessible for some reason or another. Like uh, in January, I had hand surgery on my right hand and I couldn't do anything with my right hand for a week. And so I had to learn how to use dictation on my Mac and I had to um, move my trackpad to the other side of my keyboard and be you know, as adept as I could with one hand on keyboard and trackpad at the same time. And that was just, you know, it was just for a week. And it was because of surgery, but I've, you know, at some point we were all going to rely on this stuff working and being good. So the more accessible we build our websites, the better it is for all of us. And then the second thing is um, that uh, <clears throat> when we do this right, it has all kinds of downstream effects too. Um, Google reads your site and understands it better when you're using proper markup that's accessible. So there are um, additional benefits that, that um, we get when we build accessible websites. And so that's, you know, one of the reasons why these things are great to fix. Um, in this case, like, you know, Google would come and see these image files and have no idea, although now they're probably using computer vision to figure out what's in it. But before that, it was relying on alternative text and these images don't have alternative text. So, um, you know, Google would not know how to index them for their content. So there are great reasons for us to be more accessible and, and that's, that's the benefit that we get from using this tool. And then the last thing I wanted to say was um, Sue definitely will get you access because you're not using WCMS, you're in another CMS. And so any like arts library, SOE, um, we should probably make sure that they get into um, Site Improve sooner because they'll be able to do the same thing we're doing for WCMS, fix those global issues. Mm -hmm. Um, I, so I have another question from someone asking um, if we have a list of sites that are seriously or close to seriously being out of compliance. Um, and my response, I think, is that not all the sites right now are in Site Improve, but all sites can, sites can be reviewed in Site Improve. So we just have to get, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Rob, because I, I haven't been in there in a little while, but get um, users in and have them connected to websites in Site Improve, and then we can look at that. Yeah. Um, um, compliance, uh, that's how to answer that question. I, it's hard to have a site that is fully compliant. Um, yeah. it's more a matter of how, uh, what is the magnitude of the issues on a site? So it, like we're at 65, let me go back to the report here. We're at 65.5 and we'd want to be at 70. So technically at the moment, um, we have pages and issues that are, you know, not, not double A compliant. Um, so it's, it's not, a, it's not so much a matter of who's out of compliance. It's just a matter of, of 
how how I don't want to say how bad sites are. It's just more of like, are are we addressing um, the major issues? And so I would say there are there probably aren't sites that are egregious. There's just things we can do to make things better. Yeah. Sorry, that wasn't very clear. No, I mean, and and if I mean, if your site's in Cascade in the WCMS. Um, basically you're going to be around this score. Like there aren't going to be sites in the WCMS that are scoring 20%, right? Cause, cause all the templates and the style sheets and all that are set. Um, yeah. There are things that you can do to make the score go down. Like if, if you don't give your text, you know, your image is alt text. If you, you know, um, there's certain things like that, that you can make it go down a little bit, but WCMS sites aren't going to be horrid in these scores. Cause they kind of all share the same, um, templates and styles, um, unless you do some naughty things, which, you know, but, um, <laughs> naughty, yeah, some, naughty um, things. As Teresa was talking there, I'm just bouncing around between the sites that I have access to, and you can see they're all in the 65 point range. I'm going to go to the new center because I expect it to be a bit lower. Uh, but if you're in WCMS, you're yeah, it's lower because we have other we have 10,000 news articles and they probably all have something that needs to be fixed. Um, so everyone's roughly within a point of, of the main site. As if you're in Cascade, you're, you're pretty close. And if there were anything, if there were anything showing up that was just, you know, on um, something that we needed to fix right away, we've gone in and done it. And again, if it affects everyone immediately. So um, there's no need to worry that your site is, you know, causing major issues at the moment. Um, it's, it's not likely. Um, there was one other thing I was going to say, but I, oh, someone, Daria was asking about if uh, PDFs are scanned as part of scoring? I, I think so. I don't know for sure though. That's a I've very- I've seen them. Yeah, I actually PDFs have. Are, I have you know. seen PDF accessibility mentioned in here. Let's see if I can find it really quick. The thing I would recommend is if you have PDFs on the website right now, um, at the very minimum, uh, they should be OCR'd, uh, optical character recognition that's not difficult to do that what that does is the pdf if it's an image it gets scanned and then a invisible layer of text is overlaid so that the text that is in the image is also in the in the pdf as as selectable text there's a lot this is one area where you know this, this could take many years to figure out i mean you look here we've got issues with pages that are going back you know, seven, eight years. <laughs> I love this that it's holiday parties. So maybe we just need to remove all the old holiday parties <laughs> from the website. Are they PDFs of images of like people, you know, having cocktails? <laughs> <laughs> um, PDF accessibility is one area that feels a little bit daunting at the moment simply because we've come through an era where there were a lot of PDFs on the website. So I would say, you know, if you have an opportunity to replace a PDF, do so with a, you know, with a form or something like that. And if you don't, um, the, at a minimum, try to get it um, OCR'd and, and re-upload it. Um, you know, if there's any way it can be removed entirely just because it's not relevant anymore, you can, you can do that as well. Um, I don't know what else to say about, about PDFs, if you can avoid them. Do yeah, they're a, a, a pain in the patootie. That's a good way to, technical way to talk about that. <laughs> pain in the patootie, yeah. <laughs> I think that's a selection marked as pain in the patootie. Pain in the patootie. Um, Any other site improve? Yeah, yeah, Tony has a question. Um, what about HTML files that are created outside of the WCMS but uploaded to the WCMS? Will those also be checked? I think it. I think Site Improve scans everything in your site: PDFs, yeah. images, files, 
you know, yeah. anything you upload it at a, pages. You point it at a domain name and it, and it just scans everything that it can find yeah. on the domain that's linked to. Obviously, it's basically spidering the website. So it's going to the front page and clicking all the links and going to all those pages and clicking all those links and just going through a site. I mean, if you have a page that, that isn't linked to from anywhere, then that won't get checked. But anything that's linked from a page on your site is going to get checked. Okay. Any other questions? Any other questions about accessibility or site improve? This is I this is a topic I think that um yeah, like I said, we'll probably have this um on our agendas in you know some manner or fashion going forward. Um because it's just it's here to stay. So yeah. And I think I read a fact somewhere um that um something like 14% of the population in the United States, this is just the United States, um, needs some sort of assistive technology or, you know, when using, you know, a computer, um, whether it's their, you know, they need colorblind, they need to tab, they, you know, mobility, vision impaired, you know, um, and vision impaired is a huge range spectrum. Um, I mean, there's so many things. So, you know, it's a bigger percent than you actually think. And even just in Rob's case, like temporarily needing to be, you know, you're impaired somehow. Um, so it's, it's, it's not going anywhere. Yeah. Yep. Um, so yeah, Tony's question again, nothing behind a password privacy wall gets scanned. So locked behind a password. I don't think they can get to that content. So that would, yeah. that would be tucked away. It would have to be, it has to be something publicly accessible. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, I think that's. Okay. Oh, man. Um. So Daria has a comment, yeah, just... um, which is a good comment. Sorry to hop on the PDF issue. PDFs aren't necessarily forms; they are used um, so that formatting of content doesn't change or can't be changed when viewed by another person. So, would the recommendation be to have, um view only Google Docs, like maybe instead? Hmm. Um, it, good question. It really depends. I would say it depends more. <clears throat> I, I can just talk about the way we tend to think about stuff here in, on our team, um, which is that it's, it's more about the, the content itself um, rather than the formatting. It's like, is, is the content, does the content need to be available to everyone? If it needs to be available to everyone, and you know, we it, the audience is the public web, um, I we just generally avoid PDFs because if you use a PDF, there's there is no way to ensure that it, that that content is available to everyone. Whereas um, if it's HTML on a website, um, independent of formatting, that content is available to as many people as, as possible. <clears throat> so it's really about who the content could be, should be available to. Uh, if secondarily, um, I would recommend Google Docs over a PDF because Google Docs is underneath the hood HTML. It may not be the best HTML, but I know Google takes accessibility pr pretty seriously, as seriously as um, their lawyers have told them to. Um, <laughs> And, and so Google Docs does have pretty good um, accessibility. Uh, and again, I, I can't speak to it the way Kevin um, from the DRC could, yeah. but I think he would probably tell you um, PDF generally should be avoided if you can, and then um, Google Docs would be better. And then ultimately HTML is going to be your best bet, the, or the website is going to be your best bet. Yeah. Okay, well... Um, I think we can open up to just kind of an open Q and A. Um, we're at 10:45, so we've got some more time. Um, we don't have to go the full time that we've, you know, reserved, and that's totally fine. Um, but I think probably the best way to do this um, is if you have a question, just unmute yourself and just ask it, so that we can, you know, I'm not trying to read out, and you guys are tired of hearing my voice. Um, so. I'm not. I like to <laughs> read out questions. You can put them in chat too. Uh, yeah, so just um, we can, 
yeah, just if anyone has a question, just go ahead and unmute and just ask, and then we'll we'll uh, we'll answer. So, um, Jennifer. Um, Okay, she doesn't have a mic. Okay, so she says, we had a change to our website. An image mysteriously showed up on our homepage, middle row in the left. No one made the change, and I, and I could uh, not see the change in the history. Another page that I had deleted also showed back up. Ah, any idea what could have caused this? I don't, and then she doesn't have a mic. Okay. Um, this is admissions, right? Um, Jennifer Yeager, risk services, right, Jennifer? Oh, risk services, okay. Yeah. Sorry, I was... Yes. Um, so, it could be, so it could be that um, the images were, so it could be that the image that showed up, that had gone away and showed back up, it could be that um, you unpublished it, maybe, and then... Um, but it wasn't set to not publish, right? So unpublishing was temporary. And then the next time the whole site was published, it would have gotten republished again because there was nothing to say, don't publish that page going forward. Um, so that's something possibly um, is an answer. And then um, let's see, homepage, image showed up on the homepage. Um, I would have to take a look at that. That's, a, that's an odd one. Probably something similar. Someone made a change um, to a content block or something, and then it got unpublished, but didn't get published. I, I don't know. I have to technically look at that behind the scenes. I like these kinds of questions because it's like, okay, what? what I know, just trying to like wax philosophical um, what it could be. But are you looking at it? Uh, I was looking at it, and so one. One thing that can happen, we've had this happen with news articles, is kind of what Teresa was describing, where an image gets unpublished, but, um, and so when an image gets unpublished, it, it just doesn't show up anywhere. But then the next time something else gets published, it could show up again. So it could have been that you had an image tag or that image was, was um, embedded on the page. And if the image was deleted, then it wouldn't show up on the page and it would look like it was gone. But then as soon as it was published again, it would show back up. Um, there's the version history of your page and it might show, no one made the change. Um, I was gonna look in and see what the version history of the page was, because you can always inspect and see, you know, all the, the last 25 changes that were made to the page. And, um, or actually in that case, I guess it would be the block, right, Teresa? It would be, yeah, it would be the content block. Um, which might even be easier to, to troubleshoot because you could see everything that happened to that block. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so that, that might be the thing. And then, you know, we can always, um, you know, we can put it, you can put a ticket in um, and then we can, you know, I can follow up offline, spend, do a little bit more digging if that's not what happened. Um, but a lot of people think that simply unpublishing something is like, oh, okay, it's gone. Well, no, it's, it's gone until the next time you publish, unless you actually set that asset to not publish again um, in the metadata. So that's might be what happened. So any other questions? Don't be shy, guys. Okay. I don't have any questions at this time. Sorry. It's okay. It's <laughs> good. I was trying to think if there was any something else fun to show. Yeah. Um, Do you have any? Um, there is one thing. One thing that some of my colleagues have been having issues with is we're publishing, and it's. Uh, going through making changes on a page, editing, submitting, and then uh, trying to, you know, and then hitting publish, and then it doesn't show up. And sometimes it doesn't show up as a publish with the changes on the page for a while, and by a while, I mean like hours later. Um, is there something that we potentially might be doing wrong, or is there something? I don't know. We're just trying to figure it out because it's, you know, we, I, I hate 
going and hitting submit and publish, submit and publish, trying to get it to quote stick. Um, and cause it looks like it's not, it's like, why is it, why is it, what? cause when you, in WCMS, the changes are showing, but you go to the live website and it's the same old thing. Okay. Um, couple things come to mind. Number one, making sure that it's not, it's still not in a draft format because drafts won't publish. So hitting that now, I mean, with the most recent update, it makes it a little bit more obvious that it's preview draft. It used to say save and review. So people thought saving and reviewing was a submit. And then they were like, my changes aren't publishing. And then, you know, it's like, oh, you have to hit submit. So that's, that's one thing. Maybe a user's not sure that you actually, it's a preview draft, then submit, and then submit. Yes, it's true. And then publish. And then, you know, yes, publish. So there's like a lot of clicks to actually get it to publish. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing is that could be is that um, the um, assets, again, set to maybe not publish. If the, sh if the changes aren't showing up at all, that means that you can make as many changes as you want to it and try to publish it and it won't publish if you're publishing a folder. Um, but you would have gotten a message that said this asset is set is not set to publish. So that might not be it. Um, are you trying to publish just a page or are you trying to publish um, uh, the whole site? Because that could be a whole thing. The uh, other thing that comes to mind might be that there's some caching going on where you're kind of clicking, you know, like, you know, maybe refresh and so you have to kind of clear your cache, maybe review it again or look at it in another browser. So there's a few things that it could be um, off the bat. Um, the, one of the things that's come up is where it's a fairly new page um, or a new page um, within, uh, within the site. So it's like in the staff toolkit, um, we've had this issue a few times. Um, so um, one of my things is I've gone through and republished, you know, gone in and checked to make sure one, that every, all the assets are there and two, that the order of the assets is, you know, set in the metadata and then three going ahead. And if it still didn't do it, then went through and, um, republished the entire subcategory, you know, so staff toolkit republished that oh, folder and yeah. then clear out all the caches and cookies of the web page, And then in, in another browser, not the browser that I'm using for WCMS and it still didn't show up until like a while. Like it was, it was like almost an hour. Huh. Well, sometimes publishing takes a long time. If you're publishing like a, like an entire directory and if there's a ton of stuff in there, publishing can take, I mean, there are some sites that take three, four hours to publish. Oh, uh, that's good to know. Yeah, no. So publishing's not like instantaneous. If you're publishing just a page, it is. But if you're publishing like a whole folder full of things, then that can take quite a while to publish. Um, but I, my suspicion is that it's got something to do with the caching of your browser. Um, if it's a brand new page um, and it, the page isn't showing up, maybe in the left nav, it means you have to, you know, you have to publish the folder. You put the page in in order for that to show up. So there's a lot of different things it could be. But I think you're onto the right track, Katie. I think you, you. You've been troubleshooting correctly. Um, oh, good. I I'll <laughs> say about that, Rob. Um, any other thoughts? Uh, one thing I'll do if I'm just really not sure what's going on is I'll open a private browser window, which you can usually do with like Shift Command N or just going up to the file menu. Because what that does when you open a private window is it the it's basically like opening a fresh browser. There's no cache. There's no nothing everything that is linked on that page gets fetched um, the style sheet the javascript everything so you're yeah. getting the latest copy off of the server when you do use a private browser browser window that's the way it, basically saying i'm a brand new user give me everything i always forget that that's a that's that's a really good one yeah forget. yeah so private browsing people because those you know the browsers they they're they're smart and they think they know everything but you know sometimes they you know, well, you know, additionally, we actually, we, we put a, um, we tag the, some of the, some of the assets, we, um, we tag them 
so that they they have longer lives. So I don't, I'm not sure how to say this. We we put code in, on the servers and in the links that uh, to the style sheets and the JavaScript files that say this is a asset that doesn't change very frequently. So it's okay to hang on to it for a while, dear browser. Um, <laughs> and it it's not the same for content. So HTML is, uh, is almost always given a, a very short lifetime of um, you know, 20 minutes or something like that. But for the style sheet and stuff, we do give it longer lives. Although that, that shouldn't be a problem here. It doesn't matter if you're getting uh, a copy of the, sorry, a cached copy of the style sheet um, for what, for the issue you're describing. But a private browser window will always go grab everything brand new. Good reminder, that's awesome. Thank you so much. That Those are great tips. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for asking, Katie. Uh, Jennifer, who I remember, says she doesn't have a mic. <laughs> Her question is, are there any resources for us for, to help us use Google Analytics more effectively or at all? Um, the answer is yes, there is. Um, I'm going to share my window again. Do it. Do it. And this is what I've started recommending. So this is a conversation that happens a lot. We've done a lot of talking about Google Analytics and, and what we what we can do. And it really comes down to, oh, that's great. Go to, um, <laughs> said that moment where I realized I'm going to go to YouTube and recommended videos for me are going to show up and it's going to be, that's the new like embarrassing thing that can happen on, on the web now, right? Is your YouTube history shows up and it's like baseball videos and okay. There is a Google Analytics YouTube channel and they have playlists. You have to do a little bit of digging here, but they have playlists for getting started. Oh, that's Tag Manager. Okay. I have found it before. Um, I'll have to find it and share the link. Yeah, I think that, that would be really helpful. And I could even put that on, you know, the help site and kind of share that out with everyone. Yeah, I, mean, so I, I actually might need to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, things change a lot. There's a starter. So there's a starter channel and a starter playlist for Google Analytics. And, um, and, and, and it gives you the you know, the, it gives you the basics. It's about 90 minutes, I think, of videos in total. So if you can dedicate a little bit of time a week or a little bit of time a day within, you know, a few days or weeks, you can, you know, get up to speed. And then it comes down to, and this is where the complexity comes in. It really comes down to questions, like what you want to know after that. So it depends on what your site is for. Like I tell people, you definitely want to know what your most popular pages are. You also want to know what your least popular pages are because maybe they don't need to be on the site or maybe that information can be consolidated into other pages. Um, and we've had uh, presentations here uh, in the web users group about Google Analytics before. And, and I tend to say very similar things, which is uh, it, it really comes down to what you want to know. Yeah. Do you want to know how long people or where people are coming to your site from? Well, then you're looking at refers and you can, I forget, uh, let me pull up analytics. Oop, come on. I was just looking at something, yeah, a couple of days ago. But that's the that's what makes it what makes it hard for us to try to give a general overview is that it it really does depend on what you want to know, what you're looking for, what specific question you have. Let me find um, in the moment. Actually, it's gonna go to my favorites. We'll go to just go to news. So for example, on the news site, we really, our main curiosity is what's, what's popular? 
what's trending at the moment. Uh, every now and then, in fact, just a couple of weeks ago, a story about how autonomous vehicles will change traffic patterns in cities of the future went totally viral. Front page of Reddit got several thousand, um, actually tens of thousands of views in a, over a couple of days, which is is, un, is not common for our news stories. So we, I just come in here and say, you know, here's a popular story. Let's see where the traffic is coming from. And we get a sense of, you know, where this, where, where people are coming from to see this story. And that's one question, you know, what's popular and, and where's, where's the popularity being driven from? There's also, you know, um, when people come to the site for the very first time, where, where are they landing? So there's so many ways, there's so many questions that you can get answered that it's, it's hard for us to give a general overview because it really depends on what you want to know. So I kind of encourage people to take a look at that YouTube channel to get a general idea of, of what's available and then think about the questions that you want to answer. That's great. Yeah, so we'll, we'll uh, send out that YouTube channel link. Um, yeah, I'll try to find I think it. it's, it's a really good tool, underutilized, because it's so big and it's very, I mean, personally, it's, it's, it's big and it's overwhelming. Like, I don't know where to go in Google Analytics. It's, there's too many things. But like, I know how to find the basics, just like Rob was showing, like, most popular, you know, least popular. How do people get there? How long were they there? You know, and then you can change the dates to see a pattern over weeks and months and that sort of thing. So, yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't really train on Google here because Google is Google and they change so much all the time. So just when you think you're going to really, you got it down, they change it again. So, um, <laughs> you know, I, I found that so many times like, oh, but it used to be that link used to be right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other questions? Not that this is the only time you can ever ask questions. It's more like, you know, um, you can always shoot us an email or open a ticket and we can help you with stuff, but it was more just we have some time for Q&A. So going once. Hi, I have a couple questions if you can hear me. Uh, yeah, who is this? This is uh, Maureen Wolf from the Career Center. Hi, Maureen. Hi, um, I was just in your class this week. Oh, okay, um, great, hi again. Hi, um, so I have a question about uh, broken links. We have um, some archived content on our website that is not currently published and live for the public to see, um, but it seems like our broken link checker is picking up on a bunch of um, links that are not hosted on our website that are being reported as broken. And I'm wondering if I can ignore those and why that might be. Are there links um, to other oh, sites? So. Yeah, like we had we had um, a page with some resources um, for people to check out for various different careers and um, what they could do with different majors, for example. That's a couple of the links. Um, and those links are still up on the web, um, not hosted on our website, but just resources um, from third parties. Um, and those are the, the pages that we have that had those resources are not published, but they're still being reported as broken links. So I'm wondering why that is. Oh. So then they might be still published. Maybe they're, I mean, they might be out there, maybe um, still. I wonder though, because it's inside the WCMS, that is get, the link checker is running through that content even though it's not published it's still in the system mm -hmm. so it's looking over those pages checking those links and finding that they're broken if if it's um, if the pages are unpublished do you still need them is there any intention of publishing them again someday or are, are is it they're going to be offline forever um, I don't 
think there would be a reason for us to publish. So um, I was considering deleting them, but I need to check with the rest of my staff to make sure that that's an okay thing to do. I just want, I wanted to ask for future if we choose to unpublish a page and then want to use it again, if that would be showing up in our report for broken links, because I obviously want to keep track of how many live links are, are broken so we can keep that to a minimum. Yeah, I think the other thing is that the broken link checker, it's not like instantaneous. So like if you, you know, it, I think it, it, it refreshes, I, I want to say like once a week. So you can have things that are reported broken and then fix them. And then they'll still show up there until, you know, the, a, the new refresh. So depending on how long that page has been unpublished. I actually honestly don't know truly if the, if the link checker is looking at um, content only in the WCMS and, or if it's actually, um, only looking at stuff that's being published. I actually am not sure. Um, cause it's, it's a fairly new ish tool and I'm not a hundred percent sure how it, how it all works. Um, I think from my understanding is it's doing, you know, when you save a page, it, uh, it runs a link checker over it. I think it's doing that for content. Okay. Without system. it being yeah. published. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it's before publish. So yeah, so Maureen, to answer your question, you, you can ignore any of them that you want. Um, there's actually a little thing in there you can just say, ignore this one. Um, and then also sometimes you get false positives where it'll say, this is broken. And then you actually click on the link on the page and it works. Um, so the link checker sometimes will report back something that actually isn't broken. So it's more for you. I'm, I love that you're looking at your broken links. That's the number one like, yes, good. Um, so be on that. That's great. But sometimes it's not perfect. So that's, you know, if you go to the actual page and the link is working, then you can just ignore what the broken link checker is saying. Okay, got it. That's yep. good to know. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, um, so we had a question, does every site have access to Google Analytics? Um, in, the, in the WCMS, yes. Um, not everybody has access to the analytics, but every site is connected to the analytics. So if you're someone that, um, would be going in and doing analytics and needing to see all of that, just put a ticket in and we'll add you as a user to a specific site. So just, um, you know, yeah. So there should, there should be, hopefully there's people in your department that can already see them. But if, if you're someone that doesn't have access, then um, put a ticket in and we'll, we'll check that out for you. One way to check is to actually go to analytics.google.com. Um, and if you're logged into your browser, um, I think the information should be there. Um, yeah. if you're logged in, yeah. if you um, have, if you have access, if you have access, you go there, then your site will be in the little drop down site. Yeah. There. Yes. So, but that's all, you know, a ticket. If, if you don't have it, just put a ticket in and we'll, we'll hook you up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? Can I share something if we yes, don't have share. any more questions? Share. Um, let me hold on, pull this up. I was reading an article that I thought. Sorry, I gotta find it. Okay, I'm going to share this real quick and and. I'm just giving people time to ask other questions if they want to. Um, but I wanted to show this particular article. If you're familiar with Jacob Nielsen, he was pretty influential um, early on in the web's development for focusing on usability and the importance of usability in, in creating uh, web content. And I was reading this article uh, from a couple of years ago that uh, I think is was helpful to me and hopefully um, could be helpful to others as well. And it's about um, this idea of chunking content. And it's um, because of the way we, we process information, it's better to break it down into smaller pieces for people to um, uh, process more easily and remember and stuff. So when it comes to web content, the advice here is, you know, take a large body of text, break it up, put headlines above it, um, make it not so uh, dense 
uh, at one time. We do that with images, we do that with headlines. Um, and it occurs to me that I've heard um, no one on this call, but other people talk about like, oh, I don't, you know, I don't want to do that. I just have the big long thing of text. And I was just thinking about phone numbers and how we we divide phone numbers up with these dashes, but th we don't have to press dash. Like we, the only reason there are dashes in phone numbers is for us to remember them better. It has no bearing on actually making a phone call. So we could be just displaying numbers, phone numbers without the dashes, but would they be as easy to remember? Nope, they wouldn't be. And so that's why content chunking is a good thing. I just had this total epiphany about it because I had never <laughs> thought of it that way before. So I was like, I want to share this wide and far. Um, so for this group, it I think always think about in terms of like, are there logical places where you could insert a headline to break up a piece of text, a chunk of text, a few paragraphs into um, an idea that that headline conveys? Um, Doing that on a page makes it so much easier to to take in the content, the information that's on the page. So I just wanted to share this article. It's a really good article. And I have to, I'm going to share that I don't think I've seen the word chunks and chunking on a web <laughs> like ever. And yeah. they look, those words look weird to me. <laughs> I just have to share that. Like, it's like, oh, I, have I, like, you know, we say the words, but I'm like, that's really, they look weird. Anyway. Yeah, you're right. Uh, it's one of those things that's said way more than it's written. Way more than it's written. Mm -hmm. um, but I do like the, the sharing, the, kind of just writing for the web. That is a, a, a good little snippet of information. I love that um, mm -hmm. because, you know, here at UCSC, we're really, we love our words here. And we see so many pages of paragraphs and paragraphs of text. And you know, writing, you know, um, thesis is different than writing for the web. Um, so kind of, if you can take a step back when you're looking at your website and the pages that you're looking at and do this and say, okay, where can I put some pictures in? Where can I put headlines and subheadlines and change a paragraph to bullets and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and hopefully I won't insult anyone with a degree in library sciences, but we're all kind of librarians. We're mm -hmm. all in charge of content that we want to be available, accessible and easy to understand. And that, you know, that means we have a, a not a duty, but a part of our job as web content owners is to make that content um, as, as available as possible. And that, you know, folds into our accessibility conversation yep. too. Yep. Okay. Well, people like this one. It's good. Um, and Rob put the link in the chat window. So if you guys wanted to read that fully, that's great. Um, okay, well, last call for questions and then we will just um, end this meeting. Um, and then also if you guys have any, um, as I always, I try to ask this, if you have anything you'd love for us to talk about or spend, kind of dive in deep on, just shoot us an email um, for the next agenda and we'll um, uh, help you with that. Um, so Aaron, you're saying you want a topic about making redirects? Is that what you're, yes, okay. Um, we can talk about redirects. Maybe not making them, but talk about them and what they do and how and why not and yes and those things. <laughs> Gosh, yes. We could talk about HTTP status codes for redirects. Oh, man. Oh, my yeah. God. Yes. So much we could talk about redirects. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so much to say. Yeah. Um, you can nerd out on that. Let's totally that nerd down. out on that. Yeah. Um, okay, so redirects. Okay. Um, Good. All right. Well, I'm going to call it and um, thanks for joining. I have recorded this, so um, we'll, uh, you know, rustle it up and in, into a link that we can send out to share to everybody. So if you had to step out or could make it, it's recorded. So, all right. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. See you next time. See you next time.